No, I, I look after HR. So the whole host of HR. So that comes with the recruitment, which is obviously very important in terms of student engagement and getting a pipeline of good junior talent into the agency through to performance evaluations, trainings, development, culture. So a very interesting role that I have, but a particularly interesting part of it is engaging with the students and, and getting them to know about Alma, our opportunities. And, and one way that we do it, which is how we found Sabrina and Carla, is working with schools on our internship programs. So obviously getting that good grounding in education and honing in your skill set and your craft, we really like to see people in action, the demonstrable skills that we can really account for when we recruit. So we have two internship programs at the moment, one which is run directly through the ad school, which is more of a creative track. And people come through there, they spend a quarter away, it's called, um, and they go into a creative team and they're supported and mentored specifically with a creative team. So we have that every quarter throughout the year. And then we also have our Soul Academy program. So our Soul Academy program started, I think Sabrina was maybe the third round. Um, however, it started about four or five years ago. And it was really about getting a wider pool of talent beyond the ad school, which the ad school is amazing, but through things like account service planning, creative, digital, to really kind of come in and have an Alma experience. So hopefully Sabrina will say it was good. Um, it's We try and treat it as like a live classroom as it were. So you can come in and really get an, a, a full advertising experience. Some people absolutely loved it. Other people may have not chosen advertising afterwards, but in a way that's good because they got the full experience. But it's really working on a live project, getting them to work with all of the disciplines so they fully understand what each discipline does. Uh, and then the, the killer is that they have to present to the whole agency. So that is the end, the end prize, but it gives them a whole cycle of what it what is like to get that brief, what it's like to work with the planners and understand how to conceptualize an idea through to kind of execution and how that would look like. And we've got a number of different people who get involved. So through to creative directors, to more junior members of the team so they can see exactly what a, a journey and, and kind of like a path would look like. Um, also, we advertise all our jobs on our websites. We always look for entry level people. Um, so please reach out to myself if you, if you have anybody that you might know looking for a role. As we were talking about earlier, we have a lots of positions to fill um, and I'm only one person but we're, we're getting there um, so yeah so that that's me and we've got two fabulous people who are going to talk to you about their experience also their journey with Alma and a little bit about their role and how it looks like day to day Carla is specifically on a shoot so we've got her live live from LA um, and it's great to have her back in production and shoots because obviously 2020 was a little bit of a standstill. So I don't know who wants to go first to talk. Um, oh, I have um, just a, a, a quick um, question uh, or uh, uh, suggestion. Can you tell us about Alma? You know, the full of scope of the agency, the type of clients that you have, the different departments that you recruit for? Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, that probably would have been a better place to start rather than talking about me. Um, but Alma is historically uh, a Hispanic agency. Um, that is our passion. That is our specialism. However, we're involving and we now, I suppose, position ourselves as a modern multicultural agency. We also are expanding into more general market work as well. Um, and we've have clients previously, but that is an area that is growing. 
Our agency is about 130 at the moment, and we have offices in Miami, one person in Tallahassee because we have uh, Tobacco Free Florida. We have a team in Chicago, and then also one person, well, one person West Coast physically, but we have people working on West Coast clients as well. Um, so that's kind of a very general sense of the agency. And we're made up of a number of disciplines. The largest are creative. So those are the people who come up with the ideas. We have account service. So they're really the client facing people who make sure everything and the work gets through the process and it actually happens. We have a content and experience team. So originally they, they were branded as digital. But now it's much bigger than, you know, a digital screen. We're talking about experiences. We're talking about content, social. So we have a team of content and experience uh, creators, but also strategists. We have planners. So they're responsible for finding those key insights that really make meaningful stories and meaningful work. Um, so they would talk about research, quantitative and qualitative brainstorming about what really is the client looking for and why do consumers really behave in a certain way and an affiliate to a specific brand let's say and they work very closely with the creatives to really build an idea and build a story that then translates into communications and advertising um who else do we have then we have the the operations team which obviously every business would have so there's there's still you know opportunities if that's not your kind of discipline to be in finance to be in people i've always been in a, a people role but in a creative business because i like the pace i like the people and the creativity that uh, this can bring um what else can i tell you about alma Luis Miguel yeah. founded it and he's very much part of the business. I call him the heart of the agency. So he's still there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anything else you would like to know or any questions that specifically about Alma? Yeah, what, what clients do you have? We have a number of clients. So McDonald's, State Farm, PNC, Wells Fargo, Molson Coors. Um, what else do we have? Tobacco Free Florida, um, Lily, Percy, Lily, Lily, yes, yeah. Um, and then some kind of like more project work as well. So it makes for a great, great team to for development. You can move around clients and for creatives, so you can work on different projects. So some of them are big retained clients, and then some of them are project work. Um, and everything in between and it all depends what the client wants so some people want a tv campaign other people want a content strategy some people want print radio so it's a full service agency do you have a media department of two two okay. yes yeah very good and they tend to work on very specific clients that have that that media budget that they do it through us very good well thank you for that no my pleasure so, so shall I hand it over to maybe? I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. Um, so yes, no, good memories. Um, now that you mentioned the Soul Academy, I was actually the first class um, for Soul Academy when it started. I believe it was 2013. I think so. Um, so yeah, no, totally. That that was a great experience and I would recommend it for anyone that is interested in the industry. Um, one of the things that personally helped me out a lot is that coming into the internship, I wasn't exactly sure on what department I was looking to go into. I was kind of interested um, if I was going to the digital, if I was going to account services, maybe media, like production. So. I was kind of confused and not knowing what, what route to take. Um, once I was in the agency and I was able to meet people, leaders within the agency, um, they were super approachable. Um, and we did the project. I was able to kind of channel myself into what I 
would see myself as in the future and my strengths that I would have um, within each role. Uh, so I decided to, to take on the account services and, and to know that that was certainly what I wanted to do after that internship. Um, and I loved the Alma environment at the time and that's why I'm back. Um, but, but yeah, it, it was great. I have to say that taking internships throughout just college and the, the first year and whenever you have an opportunity is great uh, to get exposure, to, to meet people and always to ask questions and embrace every learning experience that comes along the way. Um, so, so Sabrina, so yeah. how did you find out about the, the internship? How, how did uh, that come to you? Because I had always had several agencies that I had my eye on, um, one of them being Alma. So I did apply to several of the internships that I was interested in the agency specifically that I had been following, um, keeping track of their work, uh, keeping track of, you know, the news and ad age and so forth. And, and Alma had always been something that I would be interested in especially because the Hispanic segment is growing so much in the U.S. As you guys know, that it is something that I've always been interested in. And I think it, it has a lot of opportunities to learn about the Hispanic segment specifically in other areas. So let, let's say that you maybe are interested in advertising, but then you want to jump into the client side or any other agency, having knowledge about this specific segment to me brings a lot more substance than just knowing maybe the general market. Um, it was something that I was very interested in. So, so that's why. And uh, what was about the Alma culture that you liked so much that brought you back as now an employee? Well, honestly, everything. I mean, the people are amazing. I have to say it, it, you know, when you walk into a place and you, you feel like kind of good energy, um, that's the energy that the agency has. And it still has um, since I came back, even if it's online, everyone is very open. I do feel that Alma is a great place for growth. Um, personally, I saw it when I started in the internship and I see it now with the people that are leading, the directors, the supervisors, and even the, the agency or our leadership team, um, they are very open. And, and I feel it's a great place for growth. And that it's something that I am looking towards because obviously I, as I want to grow in, into my career, I want to surround myself um, you know, by, by the professionals that can provide me the tools to do so. And um, you said that uh, you were exposed uh, to a lot of different uh, careers uh, while you were doing your internship. And I always tell students that, you know, that, that that's what happens. That sometimes that's how you choose your career. Like Carla knew she wanted to be a creative and a, a copywriter, and she uh, followed that uh, path. Uh, but for everything else, you know, you need to be exposed really to understand what each role does. And then that role kind of pulls you closer. Uh, and then that's what you pursue. So in your specific case, how did that happen? Why did you select specifically, um, you know, account services? What did you like about the job? What I really liked and I still like on my everyday is that in account services, you get involved in any project since the very first, like since the brief to the delivery, and you're exposed to all the departments within the agency, right? And that is something that to me, um, I, I, I think I'm a people's person and I like to talk and I like to kind of solve problems. Um, and that is something that I really liked about the role and the job. I'm exposed every day, sometimes today, maybe I'm looking at creative day, decks and having meetings with the creative team, ensuring you know that that are it's within strategy. Sometimes I also have to traffic, you know, the the campaigns and and see it come to life. As other times, 
I have to be kind of involved in finance to make sure that, you know, so, so it's, it's good. And to me, I like getting exposure to everything, to the productions, to the creatives. And that is something that I love. I kind of do something different every piece of the day. And that keeps me entertained, I would say. <laughs> and let me ask you, uh, because both of you um, in, in different packages, but um, you are one of the FIU graduates. Um, and I do remember you as we were talking at the beginning. Uh, you know, we have so many students, but there's some that are memorable. By the way, you were very memorable, Carla, because she's a creative. So very, very memorable, uh, both of you. What do you uh, recommend that we either continue doing or do differently uh, in order to better, to make Amy's job easier? You know, that when when uh, we send a graduate or somebody interested in an opening, that they're prepared for that. What what do you recommend? And I'm going to ask Carla the same thing, even though your situation is a little bit different because of the school and the program. But Sabrina, what do you recommend that we do either continue doing or do differently? I am going to say something that comes to mind to continue doing is two projects that I, one did with Albaena in one of her classes, and then one that I did with you. I think that doing hands-on projects, I remember that with Albaena in one of her classes, we did a campaign based off a brief, um, and she kind of divided us into groups of, okay, who's going to be the person that is in charge of creative and strategy, and it was kind of a fun project. It reminded me on it reminded me to the internship that I had in Alma because actually that project was after the internship. Um, it was I, I can't I think it I, I can't recall exactly what class it was, but I do remember forming um, a brand strategy from the beginning, and and that was very helpful. And also presenting in classes getting out that fear of public speaking um, and having that exposure to me, that was great. Um, and there was, I know Griselin in one of your classes, we kind of have similar experiences. I remember being with you even to Miami at school and, and presenting to people and having projects in groups and, and starting to get into the field of, okay, advertising, it's collaborative work. Um, advertising and speaking, it's being creative, having, you know, like, como ser genuino. Um, so I, I know that those classes helped me out um, a lot. That's, that's what I would say. No, oh, thank you. And, and what uh, do we, should we not do as much? Does anything come to mind? And if nothing comes to mind, that's fine. I just want to make sure that uh, because you both of you are the perfect, you know, example of one of our graduates that have gone on. And by the way, it just fills us with a lot of pride uh, to see both of you kind of blossom from the classroom to, you know, to the workplace. Uh, that's why we do what we do. So, so thank you. That was uh, very, very helpful. No, of course. If something comes to mind, I'll, I'll let you know, but nothing for now. Awesome. Awesome. So, Carla, let's, let's go with you. Sorry that did, I, I kind of didn't mean to take over, but I, you know, it's <laughs> very curious. No, I like the questions. Um, so, I was hired at Alma two and a half years ago as a junior copywriter. And the brands that I've mostly worked on are McDonald's and Tobacco Free Florida, and then now a little bit of Miller Night. Um, but I had always worked on a lot of radios, like my first recording, I remember it, like it was super exciting. Um, and now well, I got uh, promoted to copywriter after the two year mark. And now I've gotten the chance to work on a lot of original TV scripts um, that I always dreamed of, of working on. And now I'm on a shoot for McDonald's where I'm literally like we're filming scripts that I wrote um, and being able to be part of like the whole process from like 
writing the script to casting to even presenting to clients like getting their feedback and now seeing it come to life for the first time in person because I did shoot through zoom but it's not the same thing it's super super exciting um and what else so I work with accounts closely because they're always like when are you gonna have this script done is this ready we're presenting tomorrow and strategy too because they brief us along with accounts on the projects and they put all the thought behind why we should do the, a campaign the way we should do it and so we work with them very closely for a lot of things and before we present to accounts we for mcdonald's at least we present to strategy to make sure that we're aligned and then to accounts and then once we're all aligned creative strategy and accounts we present to clients so tell us a little bit about your journey as a creative. So because you you came to uh, the program, the master's program that we have, um, you know, which is uh, FIU and Miami Art School now called Math mm -hmm. School of Ideas uh, to study specifically copywriting. Uh, but tell us a little bit of how, how did you know you wanted to be a creative? How did that happen? So. I always thought I wanted to be an architect and then I did an architecture course in high school and I hated it and then I was like what am I going to do for the rest of my life and I talked to one of my teachers in high school like my senior year and he was like well you what do you like so I was like oh, I like writing but I can't be like a novelist like that's not realistic at least for for an 18 year old um and he was like or this there's copywriting or there's copywriting in advertising like there's this industry where you can like write for tv for radio like billboards and i had never thought about that like growing up in venezuela you don't think of advertising as like an industry that you can like just like jump into um so he he basically showed me that there was and i started looking into schools and i did my undergrad in advertising um, and then I had a job for a year in Philadelphia as a copywriter, as a junior copywriter, but it was a lot of social media. I didn't really get to do much TV or radio, which is what I wanted to do mostly. And this program I thought was the perfect opportunity to not only get more of a background in communications and we did a little bit of strategy, which I loved. It just makes you a better creative, like more well-rounded. Um, and I also got the Miami Ad School experience, which was like a real agency experience, a lot of presenting, um, which I needed for, for my growth. Um, and yeah, I then came to Alma. Very good. What, what did you like about Alma? Because I know you went from, from the, the uh, graduating, Alma was your internship, right? Did, did Alma pick you up right after school or how, how did that happen? So I actually got hired before I graduated. Um, I got an email from Amy and she was like, we like your portfolio. Do you want to come in for an interview? And I was like, I was still, still trying to figure out if I wanted to stay in Miami, like what I wanted to do after graduation. So it was literally perfect. And the brands that I've always loved working on the most are food and beverage brands. And when I went to my interview and they were like McDonald's, I was like, yes and i mean it's been amazing ever since like it's the brand i work like i would say 80 percent on in my day-to-day -day, and i love it do, do you have client interaction with with mcdonald's or any of your clients as a creative yes yeah, so or present, sabrina's job no 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 i present every single thing that i write to clients and right now like we're in the shoot with them mm -hmm. so it's a super collaborative thing with them. Okay, very good. And and what do you like most about your job? Mm, well, we're, I'm lucky to work on brands that are incredible. Like both Tobacco Free Florida, like for, they allow for so much creative freedom. Like any crazy idea that we have, we produce and it always works. And the clients are super, um, they trust us so much. So we've gone to do super fun things for them. Like think, and a lot of it is radio. Like you wouldn't think radio can be fun, but it can. Um, and then McDonald's, like working on such a, a established, like iconic brand, like it's a dream. 
honestly. Um, we do super cool things. And because they're so like established and big, everything is like awesome. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. No, yeah, and McDonald's has been with, uh, particularly with Luis Miguel forever. I mean, I, I worked in Univision in sales and I used to call on the previous agency that Luis Miguel had and they, they had McDonald's. I'm talking back in the 90s. They, he already was working on the McDonald's. Uh, so obviously, you know, it has followed, followed him to Alma and, and here you are working on it. So yeah. uh, what do you, well, again, the same question that I asked Sabrina, like what do you recommend that we either continue doing? And again, we, the program that you attended uh, is a joint program, uh, but we wanna make sure that we continue doing, you know, create, producing the Carlas of the world, you know? <laughs> uh, what, what do you recommend that we, either continue doing or do less or do more of what what do you recommend now that you're on the other side I think the one of the best things on the program for me was the the competition that we had for Adrian Arts Center um mm. like my team won and it was like being able to work on the campaign with a lot of freedom like just like let our ideas fly and like come up with whatever we wanted for that from the very beginning to literally presenting to clients, it was amazing. Like we had so much fun with that. And the fact that there was a like an incentive at the end where we like got to see a show. And I think that was amazing. And working with people that weren't in our program too. So they were in in FIU, but they didn't. Yeah, actually, uh, just to give a little bit of context, um, we since I work on both sides, um, I teach undergraduate and I teach in the graduate program as well. I combined the team with Miami Ad School students as creative directors of each undergraduate team for the campaigns. And uh, when, when I do that, um, typically there's a price on the table. And in this particular, because it becomes a competition. So in this particular case, we had the Adrian Arch Center and the price was uh, going to the opening night of the Lion King. Uh, mm -hmm. So whomever team won, they all went to the, you know, to, to the show. So uh, the idea with that was to take students like uh, Carla that uh, she almost graduating at that point and teach the undergraduates what she knew when we got to the creative phase of the class. So it was a, a kind of, you know, a collaboration where the undergrads uh, pulled the creatives masters uh, and showed them the full scope of the campaign, including media and, and including research. So the pitch became everything, you know, from primary research to media, a media plan, but they were instrumental in bringing the creative to life, you know, to be, because that's what they were doing at the at the art school. So yeah, that was a, an awesome an awesome collaboration. The client was very pleased, you know. I'm sure they executed some of the ideas that you guys uh, put on the table. So very good. Thank you for yeah. for all of that. Yeah. So. Thank you. Uh, so Amy, I want to go back to you for a minute and ask you, um, what you know, what do you look for? For example, you have here two perfect examples of of students that you know, I, again, they took the ball and they ran with it, right? And so, what what do you look for in somebody that maybe, uh, uh, maybe fresh out of college? Um, and I want to ask both of you, what do you recommend also uh, that students do while they're working in college? You know, they're still working through their degrees, but what do you recommend or what do you want to see in somebody that has very little experience, but, you know, they have all of this checklist that you may be looking for? I mean, that's that's the thing is that we know it's hard coming out of college, um, especially now when there's, you know, lots of lots of 
recruitment going on, I think the big thing that we look for is potential. And when I say potential, it's with Carla and Sabrina, that attitude of proactiveness, professionalism, passion, and interest and being well prepared when you come to the interview, demonstrating where you have those skills. So even if you have been working on a project, let's say for the Adrian Arsh, where have you demonstrated leadership skills? Where have you demonstrated organizational skills? Yes, it may have not been in an agency setting, but if you can really demonstrate those types of potential, then that always puts us in good stead. I mean, honing your craft in college is amazing. We also look for people who have had internship experiences because it's also an experience for them. Like we've seen, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Is this what you want to do um, in, in real life <laughs> when you're adulting? But it's, it's really that potential and, and showing us that you, you want to learn. We've had a lot of people who have come in entry level, haven't had any experience, but have really shown the want to learn. We had one particular creative who we said, oh, we've got this, this animation. Like, we don't have anybody to animate. Can you animate? And she's like, no, but I'll learn. And she did. And she did because, you know, it's the the not necessarily what you have. It's how you do it and how you approach those types of problems. And advertising is a bunch of problems to be solved. So if you have the attitude to go straight in, roll your sleeves up and go, well, I'll give you what I've got, then you'll go far. And I think that's what we saw in Sabrina and Carla, that they're, they're very determined and they're, yeah, they've, they've grown, they've grown with us. So we're very lucky to have them. And, and what do you consider a successful Zoom interview? You know, because it's so <laughs> difficult. Uh, and I want to ask you a few a few questions on that because, you know, being in HR and being the first point of entry for anybody, you know, that, that's looking for, for work. Like, how, how do you make an impression in this little square? <laughs> it's, no, it is funny. I mean, at, at the start, it was a bit awkward talking to a screen like all the time, like it is now. And I really do. I love the flexibility of not being in the office, but I do miss that those those personal connections. Um, so it did. It must have been. It did take me a while to to get used to it. But I think people's passions and personalities and skills they come out through whatever means even on a phone call you can get a sense of what people really want to do and and kind of their skills um I think just always be prepared I've had a couple of interviews when that's not happened and it's really shown ask lots of questions get the best out of the interview as much as we are like I'm not here to grill grill you as such it's a conversation of okay let's find a mutual is this going to work I mean it's a risk for both of us so I think ask a lot of questions and, and just show as much interest as as you want I would say it's always helpful to ask for a job description um, so you at least know what kind of position and some kind of responsibilities I mean it's advertising it's responsibilities and then some but it, at least you have some sort of uh, kind of sense of what you'll be asked um, and then it puts you in good stead and sets you up for success but it is difficult over over zoom we are starting to to ask people to come into the office for interviews at times as well just to also to show them the office and their, their working space um, so um, what, what are some of the don'ts that you should not do in an interview, for example, or interview oh. or in the in the <laughs> application approaching you process? So what, what, are, what are some things to avoid? I would say be authentic. Don't try and be something that you're not, because eventually that will catch up with you nobody is asking you to be perfect and to know the job they're asking you to see if you know you will be a potential candidate I think if you go in there too hard too enthusiastic too too much that is not your natural self inevitably it's not going to work out so I, I would say the big thing is just be authentic and what is a difficult question that you may ask 
just to see what people answer. Oh, gosh. And, 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 yeah, and the reason why I asked that, and I like asking that question when I'm like, uh, you know, trying to uh, prep students. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions that uh, I was talking to a, a couple of strategies at another major agency, and one of the questions that they told me is uh, um, uh, uh, if, if you could create a product, what would that be and why? You know, so uh, so anyway, uh, is there a question that you ask that basically becomes like a make or break for you? Yeah, I mean, I suppose I saw that um, we've, we've got to wrap up in the chat, but um, one one is it's a bit more general, so hopefully it kind of answers your question. But is is the the specific? So I like to know what you have done as opposed to a hypothetical question, because to your point, it's like okay, well, what would you do in this situation? Um, or what have you done to show X, Y, and Z? So I would make it very, um, that it's a specific thing rather than are you organized or are you a leader or are you collaborative? It's, it's very, um, it's much more, I want to see things of what you've done. I want to get a real sense. So yeah, I would say, say that. But um, I don't know whether if Sabrina, I don't want to hog it because I know we've only got a couple of minutes left. But if Sabrina or Carla has anything to, to add or to, I don't know, what did I ask you? Uh, no, and, and, and I, uh, before we pass it over to them, we have like 11 minutes, I think. Um, let me ask you, because this is a question that I, I get asked also when I'm me mentoring uh, students. Uh, how do they how can they follow up after an interview you know in other words uh, it's it an email is it a call is it too much is it too little i mean how, what's that after interview protocol uh that you want you want to understand that they are interested but you don't want them to be too eager so what's the balance for you I think email is fine. I don't mind people emailing me. I, I mean, I don't know whether it's it's just me, but I get very I get a lot of emails. Um, I answer every one, but sometimes I'm a bit slow to respond. Um, but follow up through email. Um, I mean, normally if we were in the office, it would be a call. But follow up is I expect that, and you know, a thank you to the interviewers is is always appreciated. Um, and just yeah, feedback for them. It's like yeah, I'm absolutely interested in the position, or oh, I'd love to. This is not right for me. I'd love to be considered for something else. Somebody said that to me before, which is that's great. Okay, that's not what you want to do. We've had a good conversation, but follow up is is absolutely fine and it's expected, and you want to see that. Um, I mean, every day emailing, calling, and then it's like a, yeah, it's too much. But I think good judgment in in follow up and communication is key. Okay, very good. Thank you. That, no, that's all. That's always a, you know, a, a, like they don't know what to do after an interview, you yeah. know. So e uh, yeah, thank you email for sure. You know, expressing the interest, and then you know follow up per periodically if you haven't heard back, you know, uh, because it always shows interest. And yeah. then to Sabrina and Carla, I mean, I don't know if you want to add to those uh, tough questions that maybe you got in the interview. Do you want to share anything along those lines? So that's question number one. How, how did you uh, not only felt through the interview process, but what was your follow up like? Um, and the other question is, what do you recommend that students do while they're in school? So they're be they're better prepared for the job market. So for me, um, something that they to do in school, I would say for creatives, your portfolio is so important. Um, putting work in there that showcases your style of whether it is writing or design, not too much work, just like a few key projects um, that really show like how you are as a creative and who you are as a creative. Um, knowing what you like, what you, like what your, your preference is, if you, have, if you could just, any brand, um, having like a brand that's like your dream brand to work for or a couple, and then um, 
having ads that already exist that were done by other people that you wish you had written or or made um that's important i feel like that's always a question um and then my interview I, it was a little bit different because we hit it off so well um my current boss george and i and i seem to be like the perfect fit for the job and so it was a very like easy thing for for like him and me i think to just so it was like a, a done deal pretty much um during the interview like they were looking for a writer that spoke spanish and that wrote in spanish and i see i seemed to be the perfect fit so it was a happy story since the beginning um but still like following up always like is important like th sending a thank you email even if well i got the job and i still like sent thank you emails and you know still important um, Very good. no and you're you were always extremely diligent in school and when you bring your a game to every project you know that's important that's important because it gives you yet another person to recommend you to vouch for you you know uh, but but you start creating a body of work which is so important when you're in the creative field i mean you went to a portfolio school precisely pull, to pull together a very polished portfolio but even if yes. you're not going to a portfolio school bringing your a game like you did with the uh, arch project you know it's important yeah and even like before miami ad school the requirements to apply to this program you had to do a little bit of work so you can for sure like do it on your own and you don't need to go to portfolio school to do a portfolio you just need dedication and effort amen yeah. to that thank you <laughs> how about you, you sabrina and I, I think you got the last few words of advice for everyone for the world to hear <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that i would say um to do in school and just to continue doing forever is to keep up with the industry um, beyond what you see in school. To me, it's so important um, to be aware, to read the articles, to watch what's going on in the industry in general. What are the patterns? What are the new things that are coming out? What are the agencies that are leading these creative ideas or, or these new forms that we're seeing out in the world? I think everything evolves so fast nowadays that it is very important to keep it's an evolving industry, right? So it's very important to keep up and not just what you see in class or with what you see internally in an agency, but also what's what's out there so that you can bring new ideas so that you can have a fresh mind. Um, so to me that it's key and, and one of the hardest questions that I got asked it's to um, in several interviews that I've done in the past years, um, one of them, they asked me one time, what is the campaign that got you interested in advertising? So I was not prepared for that question at the time. So I, I mean, I went to an Apple campaign um, that is Apple versus Mac. Uh, that, I'm sorry, Apple versus Microsoft that I always had in the back of my mind. But that was one question. And another question that I, I've been asked a lot of times, um, not by Amy, but in, in other agencies, is what are your strengths and weaknesses? Sometimes it is easy to say, oh, I'm good at this and this and this, but what about your weaknesses, you know? And especially coming fresh out of college or or when we are starting in a new industry, it's good to know where you need to grow. And it's not bad to have weaknesses, but it's good to know how am I getting better at these weaknesses, you know? Um, so to me, that's key. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to say anything negative about yourself, you know, mm -hmm. in an interview. So yeah, it's, it's tricky. Very it's tricky. tricky. It's a tricky question. So, so what did you what did you answer? I know we have three minutes, but what did you answer your weaknesses were at the time? Well, at the time, I remember um, it was the attention to 
very little de details. Um, I was, my eyes went to big campaigns and big work. And you also need to pay attention to the little things like given periods and disclaimers are important. Um, so at the time that was a weakness that I had that I had identified and I said, this is what I'm doing to solve it. I have a checklist. So every time that I work on something, I have a checklist to look into all the details that I need to take a look before everything um, that I do is handed up. That was the example that I gave that you gave back then. And I still have the checklist that I go through every time I hand up something. Well, thank you for that. Well, thank you guys for Alma uh and the three of you for this interview you make us proud carla and sabrina and, and amy thank you for the work that we do and we're going to send graduates your way absolutely please feel free to share my email we're hiring <laughs> <laughs>